All right, we're live. All right, well, welcome everybody to this uh, City of River Falls Utility Advisory Board meeting for June 21st, 2021. And I believe we'll start with a roll call. Burning. Burning. Present. Morissette. Present. Richter. Here. Present. Spafford. Here. Toom. Wells Mangold. Here. All right. Uh, I'm. I was going to say Patrick Richter on that. So we have a new fellow that will be uh, Mark West Westpital. Am I pronouncing oh. that correctly? Yes. He'll be with us next month. I think he's maybe just in the lobby today viewing. He's going to get approved and put forward by the mayor tomorrow night. So we'll have a full boat next month. So thanks for letting me interject that. Better. No, that's fine. And I'm I'm going to confess to you that uh, my uh, agenda just came up. I had looked at it, but I'm scrambling just for the moment. So if I if I have a pause here in the next two minutes, I'm with you. <laughs> um, I can, I can help that, you. I can help you where you need help. So, okay, appreciate that very much. So, okay, we're looking at the approval of minutes for uh, for the uh, April nineteenth meeting. Um, can I get a motion for that, please? I motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. I'll, I'll second, second that. All right. All right. And all in favor of approving the minutes for April 19th, 2021. Go ahead and say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? No, moving forward. All right. Thank you guys. Um, we are at public comment. Do we do we have any public comments? Um. Patrick, you also have yes. the, the May 3rd minutes too. We do. Yeah. That that was our short meeting, correct? Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And we we okay, we'll go through the uh the action of of taking care of that. Can I get an approval for the May 3rd, 2021 meeting as well, guys? Folks. <laughs> A motion to approve the minutes of May 3rd. Thank you. And a second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thank you for the thank you for the catch on that, Lenny. All right. Do we have any public comments tonight? There is no one in City Hall. Thank you. All right, moving on. We have the the next set of minutes, the the West Central Wisconsin Biosolids Facility Commission. I, uh, <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes as well and get to business. I'll make a motion to approve the West Central Biosolids Facility minutes. Thank you. Second. I'll second. All right. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Moving on. Any opposed? All right. Moving on to new business. We've got the, uh, oh boy. We, here we go, guys. <laughs> so we're going to do this over, over Zoom, over WebEx. So we've got our election tonight. And Kevin, I believe, so Mark, we kind of. Yeah let you run this yeah well i can i can uh, just kind of give you the baseline here so patrick is the chair mark is the uh vice chair assistant chair um and um so we would entertain you'd want to entertain a motion for the uh new chair for the this coming year and then we'll do they'll do the same for the uh vice chair you'll ask from you'll ask for nominations from the floor I think you're supposed to do that three times if there's any other nominations, and then you'll right. vote on the nominations on the floor. 
Very good. You know, I will add Patrick. So, I mean, is there, is there uh, interest from you, Patrick, to continue? I'll maybe lubricate I, the wheels I, a little bit. Well, I am willing and my understanding, I, I agree with what you just said. My only understanding was that we just asked the candidate that they're willing, of course. Um, so I'm, I'm perfectly willing to continue in the position. So I'll say it that way. Okay, good. So then you just wait for a nomination from the floor if there's any nominations and I think that was a good way to get get the get the party started here. So very good. All right. Having said that, are there any uh, nominations at this time? I nominate uh, Patrick Richter to continue to be our fearless leader moving <laughs> forward. Thank, thank you, Kellen. I believe we need a second though. That. All right. Thanks, Mark. All right. Any further nominations? I believe I have to ask three times that. I that think you're supposed to. <laughs> Robert yep. So 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 let me go one more time. Any any other nominations for chair of the utility advisory committee? All right. Going once, going twice, going three times. All right. So being in an uncontested position. <laughs> uh, can I call for the vote for my own position, Kevin? Yeah, you may do that. All right. So those in favor of Patrick <laughs> Richter, myself, continuing as the chair position for the utility advisory board, please uh, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. All right, Patrick. I think you should do the exact same exercise for Mark if he's willing to be sure. your vice chair. Very good, Mark. Are you willing? Um, you know, I I certainly would, but I would open it up. I see Kellen and Matt on here tonight. Uh, if either of you would like to be that vice chair, you're welcome as well. So, Kellen's saying no. <laughs> they're they're they're. We They're should opening. just we should just open up nominations and if people are so inclined okay. they can they can Agreed. nominate. Agreed. So <laughs> so yeah. I'm fine with it, Patrick. So yeah, you can go ahead very, and open very it up good. for nominations. So okay. So opening it up for nominations. Go ahead. I vice chair. All motion to nominate Mark Spafford as uh, vice chair for the utility advisory right. board. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Very good. Any other nominations? Okay, I've asked twice, so I have to ask a third time. Any other nominations for vice chair of the Utility Advisory Board of River Falls? Very good. I'll call to, to vote. All in favor of Mark Spafford acting as the vice chair of the Utility Advisory Board, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Sounds pretty quiet, Mark. I think it's you and me again. So. Well done, Patrick. That was uh, to the letter of the law. Nice work. Oh, there. great. Good, good. <laughs> All right. Well, we've we've conducted that business. Now we are going to move on to point four, the resolution regarding review of wastewater treatment plant 2020 compliance maintenance annual report. Who do we have for this? Patrick. Time? Yeah, very, very good, Patrick. We have Ron Growth here today, our yep. water wastewater superintendent. He's going to do his annual show on our compliance maintenance annual report. Um, the good news is I'll set the stage. Our grades are better this year since we have gotten our new aeration in our fine bubble aeration and uh, grades are better and electricity usage is down and Ron is going to give a brief overview on that. Ron, take it away. Good evening. Um, Lene, do you have that loaded, that PowerPoint? Maybe you can just bring it up, go over, yep. have a few slides we can go over. I can get a bat and get loose in the on deck circle because you're next. <laughs> so the compliance maintenance annual report, it's uh, basically uh, it's a grading system. The DNR gives us a grade. It 
it's a measure of how well our uh, wastewater treatment plan is doing and how, how good our collection system is doing. Number of different uh, metrics they measure. Uh, the big one is, is our effluent discharge to the kinney. That's the biggest thing they're looking at. There's a number of other things like operator certification, um, you know, issues you have, uh, treatment plan overflows, um, exceeding you know, design limits, things like that. So, um, and like Kevin said, we did, um, you know, we substantially upgraded our aeration capacity uh, because as you know, for the last few years, those of you that were on the utility board, we, we've always had a, a issue with our influent BOD loading and BOD is the biochemical oxygen demand. And that it basically the, the biochemical oxygen demand is anything in the wastewater that um, would have would use oxygen. So, can you see the screen yet or no? Uh, I just your screen. You had it up there for a second. Okay, my computer is picking the other one. You can see Windows Explorer, but you had the presentation up for just a second. You had it. Yeah, you have to pick a different. I have multiple screens. If I'm, I apologize. It's Are you able to go up to the top and say switch? Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, just hold on, run until we get this up. Getting it? Is it coming up, Lene? Yeah, I'm so sorry. It's being really slow right now. I saw Mark Westpatal is on. He's on audio. So, Mark, uh, welcome. Look forward to having you next month. All right. Can you see that now? No. Oh, there it comes. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right, Ron. Let's we'll go a you couple slides and there we go. Okay. Uh, hopefully everybody can see the first slide here. It's a little small on my screen anyway, but um, as you can see, um, everything was a, we had a perfect score on, on all the categories. Um, the one we didn't, uh, where we had the B, was the was the influent loading, the BOD for the influent lo loading. The same issue we've had for a number of years. Um, and as Kevin said, we've done our upgrade. Um, a big part of the reason for our score, our higher score last year, was was a decrease in actual loading coming into the plant in 2020 because of COVID mostly, and, and the college being closed for as long as it was. So uh, what we're doing now is we're working with the DNR to upgrade. Um, now that the facility is the the it's, it's complete, the construction is complete, and we're at full aeration capacity. Um, we're working with the DNR to upgrade those numbers. So for the 2020 report, the new numbers will apply. And in a later slide, I have those numbers. I'll show you um, what it was and what we're going to be moving to. If you want to go to the next one, Lene. Okay. So you can see um, that uh, basically that, that shows you your monthly loading. Um, you know, in, in the summer months, we're usually lower through this time of the year, July, August, and that's mainly a function of, of the college being being shut down or partially closed, at least not to the extent it, you know, it's open in September through May. Um, and then that number that with the red circle at 3152, it's 3,152 pounds of, of biochemical oxygen demand per day. That is what our plant was rated at with the old lakeside rotor system we had. So anything in excess of that, um, then the DNR says we're, we're exceeding 100% of design capacity. That's where we get you know uh, points taken away. And then also even at the 90%, so 90% of that level um, also affects us not as as bad as the um, the 100% design loading exceedance would. 
But as you know, throughout the years, even with that exceedance of the design loading, our effluent was always good. We always had good quality effluent. I mean, we were, we were well below uh, permitted limits, um, but there has to be a number that the engineers say, this is what you can treat, even if physically, you know, you can show you're, you're doing better. Um, but that's what that number was, 3152. So if you want to flip to the next slide, Lene. So there you see it. So 3152 is our, is our old system. So with the new uh, fine bubble diffused aeration, we're at 4798. So you can see a 52% increase in capacity. Um, and that is expected to take us through the year 2040. Um, who knows? I mean, development keeps going like it currently has been. Um, you maybe get to that number quicker, but I, I think everybody knows at some point it'll slow down. Um, you know, we went through the 2008 through 2016 where everything was pretty stagnant. We didn't see much growth. And I mean, since then though, it's we've, we've had some significant uh, increases in loading. Uh, next slide. Uh, I put this on here just to give you a kind of a rough idea. We're getting starting to get some numbers on our electrical usage. So that top um, orange yellow line, that's 2019. Our loadings were higher then, that was the non-COVID year. So um, you can see that's why electricity usage was up farther. Um, the blue line is last year. So those are the numbers in June last year, you know, during right at the beginning or the, the height of COVID when we were, everybody was kind of shut down. Um, the funny thing is, is so the, the bar graphs are the actual, that that's what we've seen month to date um, through the data on the screen, what we've seen for usage, that's about a 10 to 12% reduction from last year. Um, the loadings this year are still similar to last year. They haven't, they haven't really went up too much. Our June loadings are, are pretty much in line with last year. I expect those numbers come September to start taking a jump and, and get back closer to those 2019 numbers. So, but what, what we see is, you know, we're seeing about a 10 to 12% decrease in electrical usage um, in the summer months so far, at least June. Um, in the winter, earlier on, April, March, we saw a bigger savings. We saw about a 25% reduction. And I think the reason for that is with the old lakeside system, you could only turn the rotors down so far so the farther we turn the rotors down, uh, the less electricity we would use. Uh, even if you're getting enough oxygen with them, the trouble is, is um, you don't keep the ditch mixed, the solids settle out, you don't get good treatment. With this system, we can turn it down uh, quite a bit farther and we have an auxiliary mixer that actually mixes the tank. So we aren't using that, you know, our, our air system for the mixing as much. Um, so we, we actually see, you know, closer to a 25% um, decrease in electrical usage. And that in, in the winter, the reason you don't need as much, even though your loadings are up, you don't need as much aeration capacity is because the colder the water temperature, the more dissolved oxygen it can hold. So it's a lot easier to hold oxygen and water as the water warms up, it's it's harder to accomplish. So um, you're pretty happy, is, Ron. Uh, you're pretty happy, Ron, with your new uh, system. Uh, yeah, it's been real good. I mean, our, our uh, you know, the treatment is we're able to hold with the old system. We had trouble maintaining DOs during the day, especially in the summer. We'd have to catch up at night when loadings were down um, and then try to ride it out all day long. This system now uh, just basically um, two milligrams per liter of DO is what we, what we like to see. This system, we can uh, go right along, um, no problem throughout the day, throughout the night, hold it right at two milligrams per liter. So, and that's part of the electrical savings too. We don't have to overwork this thing at night to try to, you know, get enough oxygen in there to ride us out through the day. So, yeah, it's been so far so good. I mean, it's uh, our, our influence screen. We, we've been catching a lot of uh, what's coming in so we don't have the ragging issues in the plant. Um, the diffused aeration, like I say, it's, um, you know, our first ditch, I think, started up in October and been kind of humming along smooth ever since. So, um, and I guess I think that was it for the slides, wasn't it, Lenny? I think the last one, yes, it was. So, um, 
you know, basically with the CMAR, what we're looking at is uh, everything is basically we got perfect scores on all the categories except influent loading this year. Next year, I would suspect um, we'll be back to an A in that category as well. Um, you saw what the, the increased loadings will be, what our engineered design will be, and uh, we won't get close to that. I mean, as high as we get is about 3,300, so we have quite a bit of extra capacity right now. So I hey, guess Ron. if anybody had any questions about uh, anything else you saw in there or, or something I was talking about, I'd be happy to answer. Ron, that score of uh, 3.92 out of four, how does yes. that compare to the communities around us? Uh, it's hard to say, um, you know, when I, I didn't individually look at um, all the other communities around us, it, some of them, if they're up against loading limits, um, then their scores are going to be down. Typically, the areas where, you know, where they put in a new plant, um, those scores are going to be higher. Uh, but I did not specifically look at like a Hudson or a New Richmond or a Baldwin or Ellsworth, any of those to see what their scores were in, in 2020. Okay, thanks. Did we get a D or F last year in that category, Ron? You know, I can't remember. I think in our 19 CMAR, I think in that category was an F. I believe it was. I believe it was, yes. And so, Ron, just to clarify, we just, we started, and thank you for saying that, we started with the new ditches in October. Yes. So we only, we only picked up those last three months or two months of the year in that score so right. next and year we should be right go ahead right so that that new number you know that in excess of four thousand loading that'll be our new number for 2021 so okay all right i'm and patrick has a resolution to go with that tonight yep I'm looking at that, and I, I guess I, I was going to just say, Kevin, I'm looking at this wondering, uh, is it is it anything more than formality for us to just say yes? I mean, are we questioning the validity of the report in any way? It, it looks to me like it's solid as can be. So um, I, I hate to use the word formality, but. It's, the pro it's part of the process. Right. That's that we're required to make sure that our advisory yep. board and city council also has to approve this. So. Okay, very good before it goes to the DNR. I think it's part of the, uh, so Patrick, I think it's part of um, what happened tonight, right? The education to make sure that right. the policymakers are up to speed on what's happening. And this is this is a way to ensure that that happens, Patrick. Very good. That is sufficient reason for me. So having said that, folks, we, we have more than just, a, this is not just a report. This is uh, looking for a resolution that we submit this re, this, re, this compliant, maintenance annual report to the Department of Natural Resources. And given that fact, I am looking for a motion to do just that. Uh, I move to approve the resolution regarding review of the wastewater treatment plant 2020 compliance maintenance annual report. Thank you. I'll second that. Very good. Thanks, Mark. All right. Those in favor of the resolution, please vote by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, we are in favor of submitting the report to, to the council for the same uh, review, I suppose, and hopefully it moves on from there. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Ron. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, just uh, real quickly, you know, when we, when you folks approve the expenditure to improve the wastewater treatment plant, the front end screening and the bubble aeration, you know, we made some assumptions that we were, our grade was going to go up, that we'd extend the life of the plant, that we'd catch ragging, and that our electricity usage electricity usage would improve. And those things are coming to fruition, and all of those things are happening that we forecasted. And the investment is paying off already, and hopefully, like Ron said, it'll pay off through hopefully 2040, depending on our final loadings as the town grows. But uh, so it's doing what it's supposed to do and our expenditure is paying off. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Ron. All right. Uh, 
going into the 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 next item of new business i um i'm really pleased that we're even able to discuss this especially given the le the recent lack of rain that we've had um actually i've talked to several neighbors and some other community members about this very topic so i find it timely and that doesn't mean it has to be approved but it's timely so uh are, do we have somebody addressing this on the front end, Kevin? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll introduce this, Patrick. And too, when we get to the uh, my comments at the end on my utility reports, I'll mention a little bit about water usage and electricity usage, and wastewater treatment plants usage. And I'll talk to us about you know conservation and how much water we're using and things like that. I'll get to that later. But this this does tie in very neatly with water since this is another water tower. So. I'm going to ask the utility advisory board to recommend a city council that we adopt a resolution to continue moving forward with our north water tower. This has been in planning basically since about 2007. And there was a pre presentation to the utility advisory board in December of 2012 on an engineering plan for this tower. We thought back in 2012, I didn't start until 2013. But one of the assumptions was assumptions were that maybe by 2014, 2015, we would build this build this tower. We've kind of uh, put it on the back burner for a while, but the time has come. We are we need to address some water pressure and water volume issues in Sterling Ponds, and we want to set ourselves up for water distribution out in Man Valley at some point. So the time now, um, so again, so it's been since 2007. Here we are in 2021. And we are going to finish the engineering and design on the North Water Tower, do the bidding in early, like to January of 22, start construction in 22, and finish construction in 23 in this North Water Tower. Jane and Nyhagen has been with this project, I think, think, since the beginning. I know she gave the presentation in 2012. She's with us again tonight, and she's going to give a brief overview of where we're at with the North Water Tower. Jana, thanks for being here tonight. And... 2012 seems like yesterday, but that was nine years ago. Jana, welcome back. All right. Thank <laughs> you. Can you all hear me? Okay, great. Um, I will try to, my, my content button is grayed out right now. I don't know if there's something you can do to allow me to share content. I just have a few PowerPoint slides. Yep, that's on my oh, end. You okay. should have access to, the, to do that now. Okay. And here it comes. There we go. You got it. Okay, great. Yes. All right. So yes, the North Water Tower project. I've actually have a pretty long history with River Falls. I've been working on water projects in River Falls since the early 2000s. But the North Water Tower project, um, we started talking about um, seriously probably in 2007. Um, it was mentioned in the 1999 Comprehensive Water Plan, and at that time it was thought that might be ready for it by 2007. Um, so we looked at it again in 2007 and pushed it out a little further. I thought, um, you know, maybe 2008 or a little later, um, and began looking at properties and getting a parcel lined up so that um, the to make sure that the City utility would have ownership and be ready to go and not have any land acquisition issues when it came time to construct the water tower. And um, then in 2012, the North Zone Booster Station was constructed. Um, it currently provides a limited flow capacity to the North area, North um, Pressure Zone area. Uh, there's five pumps in the station. Two are large fire pumps. They're 1,000 gallons per minute each. And then three of the pumps are smaller to ha handle more of the domestic and the business demand out in that area. And about that same time, we worked on the North Water Tower design. Um, usually water tower projects take two to four years, depending on land acquisition, um, but a two-year construction schedule. So definitely at least three years with the design and construction. Uh, so at the time, the utility wanted to get a jump start on that and make sure that uh, a portion of the design was complete so that when it came time to construct the water tower, it could move a little quicker to get to bidding and construction. So a little background on the project need and why a water tower is needed on the north end of the system. Um, elevations above about 941 feet 
have low pressure. And um, I'm sorry that some of the prints on here is a little bit small, but this is a profile of the water system. So you'll see in the middle, there's four, the four wells um, that are in the main pressure zone. And the storage facilities for that zone are the mound reservoir and the sycamore tank. And then on the east side of the system, there's the Gulf View Booster Station, um, and that pumps water up to a higher pressure zone in the Gulf View Water Tower. And then from there, there's the Eastern High Pressure Zone Booster Station, which pumps the water up further. And this, similar to the North Zone, this is a closed zone with just a pumping station and likely down the road, a water tower for that pressure zone. And then on the left side of the picture is the North Zone Booster Station, which has the pumps that pressurize the White Hills Ridge Corporate Park at this time. And then shown in the schematic here is the, a future water tower for that north pressure zone. So just depending on the ground elevations, that's the biggest factor in how much pressure is available at a location compared to the level of the water stored in the water tower. So um, the east side of the city, the north side of the city, um, a little bit on the west and the south too have higher elevations and the, therefore they benefit from a higher water tower. So as I mentioned, the temporary solution for the north end to allow development um, full of the Whitetail Ridge Corporate Park area was the North Zone Booster Station. So that provides um, fire flow and then the water pressure at a higher level for that area. And then the permanent long-term solution has always been to construct the North Zone Water Tower at some point. The benefits of this North Water Tower in the North Pressure Zone um, the Sterling Ponds and White Hill Corporate Park pressures will be um, maintained and then adequate fire flow provided for those areas. And generally with a commercial area or an industrial area, they need more fire flow because of the sprinkler buildings um, in comparison to a residential area. And then this, area, this north zone will also have the potential to serve Man Valley um, if that area is developed. Um, by a connection down uh, radio road. So again, it'll raise pressure, it'll raise the available fire flow, and it will increase the reliability of the north end of the system. So the work completed to date, and this was back primarily in 2012-2013, was approximately 80% design documents. Um, we did the site review and selection. Uh, the geotechnical investigation, we did soil borings of the water tower site. And then we also put together the design drawings and specifications. Um, and so the work remaining is final design, um, just with the time that's passed, just to finalize the documents, make sure that all of the specified items are still current, um, meet the current code, and then uh, get DNR and Public Service Commission approval and then um, finish up with the bidding and then the construction engineering for the project. So the schedule that we've looked at is DNR and PSC approvals um, yet this year, fall, fall and early winter of 2021. And then bidding would take place 2021, early 2022, and then construction 2022 and 2023. Um, and so I guess that's the information I put together for today. I know Kevin had a lot of good information in your packet also, but I can take questions on the project or if Kevin wants to add any information. No, I just, you know, one thing that, you know, often concerns policymakers is why do you just select one organization to do a $170,000 project and, you know, I do want to say that we are, I am sticking to our purchasing policies and we, we have been working with SEH on this since the 2000s. And we are able to uh, do this service with SEH according to our policies. So one, they've completed 80% of the project. It'd be kind of difficult to switch horses at this time. And two, our purchasing policy does allow for this service with SEH without going out to bid. So it would be awkward at this point to go out to bid, to be honest with you. 
and SCH has done a well, great job, but they've been here for us. Well, Kevin, I, I think I don't know the answer. I was on the council at the time, but I don't remember this, obviously. Um, I would imagine at the time we put this out to bid in 2012 that that we did entertain other bids. So at that time, yes. Your, yeah, at that time it was it was already bid, so it's not right. Right. You know, I guess you could make yeah. the argument that that there is a an opportunity to rebid it, but I I would tend to agree. The only question I've got, sort of sarcastically, is don't we get some sort of frequent flyer miles with the DNR? Can't they give us a discount with all the money we're spending on the damn dams? Right. <laughs> we wish. Yeah, wait till we have to do uh, some wetland permitting along the uh, river when we line our sewer. That's coming too. More mm -hmm. DNR permitting. Yeah. It's constant. It's constant. No. So the answer on frequent flyer miles of the DNR, we haven't got one yet. <laughs> so I think, you know, this project is long overdue. We have drug our feet a little bit on this project just because of the price tag and need, but the stars have finally aligned. Really the driving forces are fire flows and sterling ponds and the possibility of developing Man Valley and being ready for that. This tower is an essential piece of those two those two items. So tower is overdue and we're just getting there now and we're gonna we wanna we wanna finish it up and, and get it across home plate. Price tag's probably gone up, right? Even we were budgeting 2.3 million. It may be closer to 2.5 with rising uh, price, both labor and material costs. So it's gonna be a big price tag, but that's what it's gonna cost. And we'll go out to, and we will be going out to competitive bid for the tower itself. So Kevin, just to clarify, <clears throat> if I'm looking at the sources and uses table, yes. Um, I can I can see you know some of the things match up with the with the conversation we just had, yes. but I, I just want to make sure that the the in the uses the ninety eight thousand two hundred dollars in construction isn't misleading. I, I I'm going to management ask, should be the, I should put the word management, management. of the construction site. Yes. Yeah. That, okay. So it's construction management oversight. Yes. Uh, I S C A. Yes. Okay. So we before this goes to council, you may want to change that. I will. I'll, I'll add also, that. I'll put construction management oversight on that because that's exactly what that is. Yeah. Kevin. And then I I think I'd also recommend that it might help clarify the bidding situation if you uh, take a second and go back to 2012 and just see what the bids were and yeah. and and what that process was so that that sure. might be helpful for my fellow sure. council members. Sure. I, yeah, I know, and that's why. And I understand that, and I was trying to anticipate that. So I did spend a little bit of time with the executive team and with Sarah going over our purchasing policies, and we're, we're good. But to Scott, to your point, I, I will do that. That would be good to have that in the back pocket. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, Mark here. Um, thanks, Jenna, for that. <clears throat> that was a good presentation, and I really enjoyed reading through our uh, agenda packet. Um, just to be clear, I wasn't around when this whole thing started. So we have four wells in the city and, and we have wells. five wells and one two of those or six. two of those, those are going to be pumping up into this tank or will there be another well in that area? Dana, why don't you go ahead on that? Sure. Yeah, um, I didn't mention the sixth well, which is actually in the eastern high pressure zone area. Um, but uh, River Falls has set up the system so even this well number six, there's valves in place so that this well can supply the entire system um, by flowing kind of downhill through valves down to the lower pressure zones. And then um, the north zone booster station draws from the main zone. so. There isn't a dedicated well that pumps to this zone, but all of the wells pump to fill the reservoirs, and then water is drawn from that main zone into the north zone by the pumps at the north booster station. So, Jana, which wells will primarily fill the new north water tower then? Um, the, the wells in closest proximity are probably um, Cedar Street and Division Street. 
Uh, I think those are the two furthest to the north, but um, water would probably tend to go into the mound reservoir. And then there's um, some larger water mains, 14 and 16 inch from that area north. And that would be the feeder up to the north booster station. So um, just for my clarification, and uh, there are some residents that I talked to over in that area, um, one just north of Shopco and one further to the west. Um, and can you speak, or Jana, can you speak to a commercial type well and, and just confirm to these people that this will not affect their residential wells that are at 150-ish feet? You tell the tell, yep, talk about the one, difference, please. Thanks. Yeah, so it sounds like you're talking about private wells at residences in that area. Yep, we're not doing anything below ground except for building the water tower foundation. Um, so unless a well is built at a future date at that end of the system, um, this will have zero impact on their private wells. No wells going in at this time, just the tower. But yep. typically a, a commercial well like this would be quite a bit deeper though, right? We're getting six, seven hundred feet into a different vein yeah, the, of water. Yep. yep, the last well, well number six was right around I think five or six hundred feet deep. So yes, that's okay. typically at a deeper level and draws from a different aquifer than the residential wells. Okay. And my other question, um, I don't know, Kevin, maybe for you. Um I know the Man Valley Industrial Park and where it's going to be and how it's, I've seen the schematic of it. Um, and this will satisfy that entire area or will there, is there a future for another someplace? This, this water tower, Mark, will serve the Man Valley area. We look, you know, because Man Valley really wasn't on our radar in 2012. In 2019, we did another a study about location for this tower and Jaina and SCH spent a few months re-examining if this is the proper location for this tower. One of the sites we looked at was out in Man Valley and after all of the assessment of the of the seven or eight potential sites, we came back to the site as the best site for a host of reasons. Yes, this tower will serve Man Valley and so much so Mark that we'll probably need a pressure reducing valve because of the elevation of Man Valley is lower than it's much lower than the site, we will be able to flow water out there at a fairly high pressure to the point again where it may need a pressure pressure reducing valve as we get closer to that. Jana, did I talk accurately to that? Yes. Yep. That is correct. Perfect. Thank you, Kevin. That was that's exactly what I was wondering. Uh, Kevin, just one thing in looking at the the packet that we have. Mm -hmm. On page 47, the memo from the city, um, just looking at the numbers, they, they don't line up with the, the, I guess, the page or the letter that came from SEH. Um, looking at the uses, there, it looks like there's a difference uh, between the preliminary design and agency submittals. It says $43,780, but then on page 50 of 117 in our packet, um, it has, you know, the same almost the same numbers, but in the preliminary design and agency submittals, it says $41,250. So it's a little bit less. Um, it, you know, the, so let me see the date on this. I think there wasn't, there wasn't updated. So what the letter you see in the packet from SEH was, was updated, I believe in early June, wasn't it, Jana? Um, let's see. Yes, I think there was a more yeah, update. Yeah. Yes, there was an updated one in June that reflects the numbers in the uses table. And now that I'm looking at this, the yes, the May 5th, I think there's about a June 7th one or so that uh, that Jana updated. So that is a good catch. Not trying to be picky or anything, no, but, but that's and a I know great it's only catch. a couple thousand dollars, but no, still. that's a great catch. So when I filled out my sources and use table and did my memorandum. I was working off the most recent letter that uh, that SEH sent to us. And the one from May, we updated the May 5th letter, I believe, Gina, it was early June, wasn't it? Or late yes, May. It was. I think it was early June. Yes. 
<clears throat> so then I will just say this, everything in the SCH letter is still accurate, except the numbers were modified just slightly. Okay. But the, the memo and resolution are correct. Their submittal letter, I do have an updated one that reflects those numbers. Do you have that? Can you find that one, Jana, or should I go look for it? Um, I don't have it up currently. I just have the packet. It, we it's updated okay, the Kevin. schedule. Okay, and all right. But there was, I know, I do know, because we talked about that, and, she, and uh, I know she had updated a little bit, and I think that's what we worked off of. Whatever packet you send to council. I will get the, I will get the correct letter in there with the correct numbers. No but big deal. The memo deal. and the resolution are correct. I've got a a question or two. Um, I mentioned the the conversation as conversations I'd had previous to this, and um, part of that conversation was odd even watering. Yes. And I'm just so we're we are not adding an additional well. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. This is Jane providing Hattie. pressures, volume, yep. and some service out to Man Valley. But we are yeah, not. This, this, does, this doesn't really increase water volumes supply. out of the ground. Right. So are we are we stressing any of our current resources or any any other concerns along those lines? That's good. I was going to talk about the, that later, but that's more timely right now, Patrick. So, okay. so here's here's the situation. Um, is we do we've always had this odd even watering um, ordinance in place in River Falls. Where we're in the summertime, we ask customers on odd if you're on odd address, water on odd days, even on even days, and do it between seven p.m. and eight a.m. Um, that's been on the books forever. We don't usually bring it out. There's usually plenty of rain and whatnot, but because we've kind of been in this drought situation and we were pumping record numbers of water last week, we were pumping two point, over 2.4 million gallons of water. And for context, same week last year, we were at one three. So, and then just for more context as well, we pumped 2.4 million gallons of water out of the ground, but Ron only saw 1.2 million gallons at the wastewater treatment plant, which tells you 1.2 million gallons went on for irrigation. So half our water uses went on for irrigation last week. So again, and the, we do uh, also, we also have been keeping track of aquifer levels. They've all gone down a few feet these aquifers can be anywhere from 300 to 500 feet in depth of water. And they've gone down a couple feet, which is pretty typical in the summer. So I, I don't want to sound the alarm bells because there is no dire consequence right now from the watering. But I do think it's prudent to remind people in a drought situation just to be a little more careful with their watering. And if they don't have to water, don't water. Um, you know, I'm just trying to be responsible with our water supply. Though I want to emphasize, I don't think we're in a dire situation, but uh, I think we should be responsible in a drought situation. That's why I, I kind of put that out there for the public. So, so do those numbers in that context help? It does. So, and I, I'd invite further questions, but I, I also want to ask, um, knowing that that's been the case for some time, um, why why not? talk about adding a well at the same time um we're i mean I, I i just i'm fresh off of looking at a map of the united states and seeing fairly severe droughts in other places and knowing that we're you know we're not far from lake superior i mean we're not really worried about water here i don't want to create that message at the same time um knowing there was a, a time not too long ago in the time I've none none of us on on this board right now were were serving in 2012. This is largely new to us, as I, you know. So, but is is a new well in the conversation? I mean, is that is I'll that? Ask our water, I'll ask our water engineer. So, Gina, I think this is, our supplies are good enough that we didn't feel that now is a time that it's necessary. Is that how you're seeing that at SCH? 
Yeah, usually wells are designed to operate about 12 hours a day on average, 18 hours a day maximum day. Um, and I haven't taken a look in the last week or two at where you are compared to that. Um, but yeah, it's a combination of storage and supply. The, the, having the extra storage helps to dampen the impact during the day of the, you know, supply goes up and down throughout the day. So that's a good reason to add storage. It helps um, to give the wells a break, the more storage that you have. Um, but I think a well number seven has been on the long-term planning for quite a while. And it is something that we've talked about taking another look at here soon. But that's also a process with DNR and getting permitted. So um, you do wanna start taking a look at it before you really need it. So Patrick, another side note of that well of our water pumping last week in wells, our well number four, which is under our sycamore tower, that's been that was down last week. We were doing normal maintenance on that and found we had to replace a pump, which isn't going to be in for like another week. So we're only at, we're we're down one well and we we're, we were still to able to supply over 2.4 million gallons per day. So even with one well down, a fairly good producing well. So we were even a, 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 no problem supplying that in volumes of water. And on a, Kevin, I think it's also important to point out that as a precaution, I, I, I'm losing context for how long ago this was, but so Kevin, you have to help me. Mm -hmm. Well, number five showed some, showed some concerns for safety. And we took well number five offline for quite a while at time, didn't we, Kevin? Mm -hmm. Ron, can you speak to that? Is Ron still on? Yep, I'm here. Yeah, well five. Remember the time frame. Right, right. Yeah, we were down for quite a few months. We had um, uh, some coliform bacteria we couldn't get rid of. And yeah, it was quite a while. Before it's not on division by Mark's house. Right, right. So yes, it was. It was down down for a substantial period of time. Um, like Kevin said, right now number four well is down. Um, it is. That's fairly the whole south end of town. That's it's a big well for the south end. So um, you know that hurt us a little bit. Um, but as everybody said, I mean we we did keep up. I mean I think what Kevin was saying, it's more of a precaution than anything. Um, and when you see those water levels drop, you know it's mostly kind of like what Jana was talking about. The longer the well runs. You get that cone of depression right around where the well is drawing from, and if they come on again right away, you don't see the water level recover. That doesn't mean your whole aquifer is coming down, but that means right around that well, the water can't run in as fast as it's taking it out. But we're not getting anywhere close to our pumping, uh, you know, our pumping levels. We still have plenty of water over the pumps. That, I mean, it would take a, a long-term sustained drought to. You know, before you ever had to start worrying about that, but it's more of an equipment issue at this point. You know, how long do you want your wells to run? If you have a well down, um, once we're back up and running with that, I mean, two and a half million gallons a day, it's a lot of water, but uh, we, we can do it. Um, and, and the other thing, you know, when you start looking at additional wells, when you need them, you need them. But throughout the winter months, um, you know, that irrigation is gone at that point, but. That doesn't mean for a month of the year you're not going to need it. So, but um, in the winter, I mean, it's it's basically not an issue with with water pumpage. One other thing we did on uh, hydrant flushing. So typically June is hydrant flushing month, but there's a couple things. One, we're already pumping over 2.4 million gallons of water in a day, and hydrant flushing is a big water usage and it reduces pressures. So, and it's probably bad optics to be running all that water down the curb during drought when you're telling people not to water. So, uh, so we decided we're gonna postpone that until we can maybe get a rainy week here. Yeah, we always get calls anyway about that, but then to ask people to kind of curb their watering and then do that, it's just as a bad look, but it's required by the DNR to get that done. So we do have to do it at some point. So we're just kind of waiting until Gets a little wetter out, I guess. Well, and Jaina also touched on <clears throat> on the fact that our system is designed that it's a that it's a loop, so we can pump we can pump into any well from any or in, into any 
uh, tank or reservoir from any well in the system, theoretically. Um, Ron can probably speak, or Jana or Kevin can speak better to that than I can, but the, the system's designed as a giant loop so that we don't have, you know, there's not one dedicated well per reservoir or tank because that's just not the way the system works. There's redundancy in it. Correct. Yeah. Is that a I fair mean, statement, Ron? Yeah. Fairly often we we pump from the main pressure zone up to the, you know, up to the Gulf View Tower. We have a booster that'll lift it up there. And like Gina said, we can let water back. We've done it before. We let water down the hill from number six well out of the Gulf View Tower to come back to the marine pressure zone. So we have some, you know, we have some things out there yet at our disposal. Um, it, it's, and we can actually get a little bit more out of some of our wells than what they're producing now. Uh, they're on variable frequency drives, so we can speed up, slow down the motor. I mean, if we had to, there's a couple of wells we could we could get more out of if we if need be. Um, so yeah, we're we're definitely not getting close to uh, uh, any kind of issues right now. But um, you know, I think it's like Kevin said that that rule is out there. I think it was just uh, you know just put in everybody's mind um, and. You know, hopefully what what we did see, you know, and like Kevin said, we were 2.3 to 2.5 million gallons a day. After we had that rainfall yesterday, it was down to 1.6. So one rainfall, you see it, you know, it made 800,000 gallon difference in a day. Hey, Kevin. Mm -hmm. um, thinking of the question earlier, you know, is the water tower enough for Man Valley area? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Since we're not digging a new well or anything like that, how much would the city have to grow where we'd have to like look at the potential to dig another well for the city does that make sense at all yeah like, it does just... I, I think we do have the long range we have the water modeling plan that seh has done for us i don't have that in front of me but there is and jana maybe you can speak a little better to it but there is a there is a threshold in the plan when we get there that would trigger that well and you know i think we're moderately close to it from what I understand, Jana, can you build on that? Because there's yeah, a not a whole lot. I don't remember the exact numbers, but um, there is yeah, a number. We, we, yeah, in a in the previous studies, we've tracked population projections and water use by different classifications. So whether it's commercial or industrial or residential, and kind of projected out where those lines are going to cross. Um, and I don't remember off the top of my head exactly where it is, but. One thing that could really change that is if you had a wet industry that wanted to come into town um, and they use, you know, a half a million or a million gallons a day or something like that, then that could possibly push you into needing a new well sooner than projected. But that's um, really difficult to predict, predict when you might have something like that come in. But uh, SCH has done a real nice job over the years doing our water modeling pressure modeling and volume modeling. And uh, I think, don't you have it down the pressure at every single hydrant, Gina? Yeah, the water model does um, calculate the pressure and the available flow at all of the hydrants throughout the system. So, we, so Kellen, we watch it pretty closely and I'm sure there's a trigger in the plan and I guess it's not yet, but it's probably, you know, if Man Valley goes, I've been assuming that might tip the scales and we'd be putting in the other well. Sure. And just thinking of like the questions that people have and, and how close are we to that? I mean, everybody's sort of. But that's a good uh, question. And, and I think for council hall, I'll have an answer ready for that too. So that's good. Okay. That's a great question. And I found the other, I found your other, uh, pre, it was June 9th is when you submitted that, Jana, and I have it in front of me and the numbers in your June 9th proposal reflect of what's in that table. So it's a June 9th uh, update. I feel better that I found it. I thought I was losing my mind for a second, but no, it's. <laughs> sorry, so the, to one got in the, the main one got in the packet is supposed to be the June 9th one. Sorry. Sorry to cause a panic. No, that's not at all. That's really good. Actually. Really good. I I'd like to see if I can pull a summary out of this and, and just make sure we have it down to its its finest point. Talking yes. about the well, I appreciate. You know, mm -hmm. knowing that we're not in dire need of more water, um, that's certainly good news. So, really, what we're talking about with this water tower is adding pressure to essentially the north side of town, the the business park, and possibly Man Valley. It's it's really just um, 
the mechanics of our water system that we're we're looking to assist. Is that fair? Sterling Ponds, I'll just say Sterling Ponds corporate park is a bit of a trigger for this. The fire department watches their fire flows really closely. Right now in Sterling Ponds, of course it's it's acceptable. They were they wouldn't have built out there, but I think it's borderline depending on certain situations where you get two buildings on fire at the same time, they're going to be worried about fire flows and pressures out there. This tower will fix that. And the fire department has been on me for five years to fix that. So we're finally going to finally going to get the pressure fire pressure uh, pressures and flows at very, very high in uh, Sterling ponds. So that that's one of the main triggers of this and it's the stability of the system in the north. And Thank I you. think we'll put it. I think let's put it over the top, and and what has our city administrator on board is the preparation for Man Valley. And we were going to be having this conversation last year, but with COVID, about in April last year, we just paused this. Like we made a pause list, and this hit the pause list last year. So now we're bringing it back. Patrick, I have one more question for Kevin. Go ahead, Mark. Um, Kevin, so. The packets suggested 1.47 acres was set aside. Can you just describe the water main or Jaina, the water main line and how where the easement is? And isn't that property owned by the Foxes? Did the, did the city purchase it or what's going on there? And you want to talk about the two potential routes? Sure. Um, I've that was in, in the other. Kevin's that was in the other piece of the packet. But go ahead. You can talk. You could probably use this map to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So the water tower location is up on the top of this hill. Um, the field on top of the hill. There's an uh, antenna, like a. Is it the county antenna? I think. Yeah. Yep. Communication on, antenna on the other side. So the there's 14 inch water main in Highland Drive. So that's what we need to connect to. Um, and we are still looking at two options for making that connection, either a connection that follows the field drive up the hill and then over to the water tower, or possibly um, installing up to the field edge and then directional, directionally drilling up the hill, a more direct, slightly shorter and more direct route up to the water tower. So either way, it would come from Highland Drive. Um, there's 14 and 16 inch water mains in this area and the north zone booster station is actually i think just off the north edge of this map here um, so the water would pump through those large transmission mains up to the water tower perfect so one, That's... Is a, one is a route that follows the road and one is a little more direct route through the woods and there are easements for that right Shana, is it um it's currently all city owned City on there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have, Patrick. Very I good. want to add one more piece to this as long as I'm thinking of it kind of buttery up from a conversation similar to this one a year from now. So for in order for this tower to connect over to Sterling Ponds, in our capital improvement plans, we've also put aside two point five million dollars for the north water and sewer looping project. So from about this map that's on your screen, about from the top of the map up to the interchange in Highway 35, we already have some casings going under the interstate there, and that would allow us to connect into Sterling Ponds. So we're going to put sewer and water along th that frontage road up to the interchange and then under the interchange under some existing casings. That's about a two and a half million dollar project for water and sewer. So that will complete that will allow the water to flow. So it's kind of a piece of this project and it's, a, it's about a, it's a, be about a year behind what we're doing now. So that's coming. And that's already in our capital improvement plan to finish that out. So $5 million total expensive. I've already put my hand out for some of that federal money, by the way. <laughs> so that's just a teaser, it's coming. <coughs> All right, folks, any, well, and any it, further it, questions? Yep. Just a quick comment, you know, the water utility, the electric utility, <clears throat> stormwater, they're enterprise funds, which means they have to live inside the budget of what they raise. 
So there's this constant back and forth or uh, push pull, if you will, between water conservation. But the reality of the fact is the more water we sell, the more water that's used, the more revenue the fund has. So the watering band is a great example or uh, the odd, the watering band's wrong word to use. I apologize. The odd even watering is a great example of that. You know, we don't, we want you to use some water, but not too much. Um, you know, if we, if we totally shut off irrigation watering, we would also lose revenue, which unfortunately it's, it's not always about revenue, but in, in some cases it has to be in order for the fund to sustain itself. So there's a real push pull that goes on here. Uh, as policymakers, Scott's been in my ear all eight years I've worked here on that topic, and I and I, <laughs> look, I like it. But it's true. I mean, we're in the business of selling water. We support the water system by selling water. If you don't sell water, that's a problem. And thinking of all the like thinking of this project, the dams, um, the project that you just mentioned, you know, uh, connecting. Uh, I'm sorry, I just blanked for a second. But then also discussion that might come down the road of the you know what to do with the biosolids and things like that a lot of money yeah all well i mean all of the funds because it sounds like all of these projects could come within a relative period of time yes There's no all of this has been planned out for and everything's still looking good and yes okay just but it's stressing me out i mean a little bit i mean i'm holding the checkbook and i have to balance the thing one good piece is one is the electric fund, which is separate from the water fund, which is separate from the wastewater fund. So if they were all together, it might look different, but these are each coming out of separate budgets and we have accounted for those in all three separate budgets, but you know, there's going to be borrowing involved and I'm not a big fan of borrowing, but when you have a $5 million project, there's going to be borrowing involved. We also have that planned out to be paid for through other capital improvements and growth. So that will be paid for by development as it goes, but uh, you know, the payback is gonna take a little time. So Kellen, yes, I, I hear you, I'm feeling it. Sometimes I get a little stressed out just thinking about it, but uh, we, ha we have a plan for it. I work closely with Sarah Carlson, our finance director. We have laid it out, we looked at bonding scenarios and we can't afford it, we're gonna be fine. On the on the wastewater side, we have several loans that are expiring, one in 2023 and one in 2025 that are going to put us in really good position, actually. So we're going to be fine, but it's it's a, it's a lot of money and we're trying to spend responsibly. OK, well, and was with all utilities, we've got the same problem, right? We've got to we've got to put our infrastructure in the ground now. And <clears throat> in anticipation of them. You know, we can't be, we can't be a block ahead of them, uh, every development. It's got to go in in one big push just because of the, of the, of the fiscal dynamics, if you will. And then we, you know, we hope for that development and, and impact fees that help pay for that. Um, and then there's the impact fee uh, issue as well, where we get those impact fees and we only have so long to spend them uh, before we, start to run into problems with having too many impact fees collected and not enough infrastructure. So there's a there's a lot of different dynamics when it comes to the financial part of this. You folks are all asking you folks are all asking the the perfect questions tonight. You're asking the right questions. Those are those those are the things you wrestle with and I'm glad I'm glad you're attuned to them and just keep asking and keep pushing. Those are good. Okay. I have I've got I got a question. Oh, go ahead. Where can we see the word River Falls from, Kevin? Um, you know, I was talking to Scott Simpson about that. I said, this is going to be quite a billboard up there in that hill, along anywhere along 35 coming or going out of town. And I said, do you sell that to Amazon or do you just put River Falls on there? <laughs> Should light it up. Yeah, light it up. But no, well, I, Scott said, yeah, this would be a good one to put, maybe put our city logo on there. I think it would. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking it'll be, it'll of you know, things like uh, along 30, it'll be very be very visible along 35. 500, I, think I see a lot of towers yeah. with a lot of towers with um, cell phone antennas. You know, you can yeah. sell space on these too. I, I you believe. can. So mm -hmm. Sycamore Sycamore Tower, we get about a hundred thousand dollars a year revenue on that for to our water department for uh, 
cell phone service uh, rental space up there. All right, I'll be quiet now, Patrick. No, but that's good. I mean, <laughs> that's a pretty good location. I don't know. You know, I suppose we could maybe get some cell service rental up there too. Sure. Per perhaps we could get our local radio station a little better coverage. Who knows? <laughs> the Weaver. There's, yeah, exactly. There's there's a lot of possibilities, and it's good. Um, I I appreciate your comment about the debt, Kevin. I I've wrestled with that in a lot of our discussions that were we're taking loans, but they're big projects. And I I want to just say I appreciate one of the things we've done repeatedly is responded in ways where we see not just future demand, but demand that's already somewhat in place. I mean, there's indications in place that suggest that the money we're spending is absolutely going to be money well spent. So appreciate what the staff does on that, what you do on that. So, I mean, that this discussion happened in 2012 and here we are. I mean, it means we didn't jump the gun. So no. that's good. We, I think we drug our feet as long as we could. Right. It's appreciated. So <laughs> no, we didn't run into it. So, right. All right. Well, any further questions or comments? All right, so we are looking at uh, again, sending this to the council. We're looking for a resolution advising that we uh, hire SEH to essentially um, design and manage this project and um, looking for the exact resolution. I, I see the number in front of me, but the resolution is I'm on a different page and I apologize. At the but is it at the bottom. We, yeah, what what page? 45. Oh, I'm way at the bottom. Okay, give me a second. That's how fast everybody's computer is going through all these engineering right. drawings. There'll be all a right. quiz on the engineering drawings. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're looking to um, basically hire SEH for professional engineering services to complete engineering design bidding service as well as construction and inspection services for the North Water Tower at the cost of 169.440. And that's that's the resolution we're we're working with right now. Can I get a motion? Move to approve the resolution authorizing North Water Tower engineering contract with SEH Incorporated. Second, the motion. Thank you, Matt and Kellen. All right, we have a, a motion and a second. All in favor of the resolution, vote by saying aye. 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 All, all opposed, same sign. Very good. The resolution passes. All right, give me just a second. We are. Uh, Jana, thank you so much. Kevin, thank you for chiming in. That's that's one that's been a long time. Uh, appreciate all the work that's been done on that, and for taking the time to educate us as we've we're playing largely playing catch up on this. Scott, I have to ask, are you playing catch up on this one? Did have you been in on this one for the long haul? Uh, no, I have not. Um, okay, I, I was on the council in 2012, but I don't recall. Sure. Uh, I would have been the start of my second term, but I don't recall this particular um, item, this particular sure. issue at the time. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Jana has heard my story about 10 times now, but I'll tell this <laughs> because it's ironic on that. <laughs> so I interviewed for this position in January of 2013. And in preparation for my interview, I watched the December utility advisory board meeting and I watched Jana's presentation on the water tower. So that was my that was my prep for my interview, and I thought Jana worked here. So, <laughs> all right. Well, again, thank you for for all of the work that has gone into this. It's appreciated. So, um, having said that, we're going to move on to some reports. Um, I believe I'm going to take. Yep. Got some fun reports of uh, um, the C consumer confidence report. This went out in everybody's utility bill. But I think last month and Ron is here just to go over that real briefly. Ron, do you want to talk to that at all? Yeah, yeah, it's the uh, basically the report on the water end. So, you know, required to uh, basically everything you see in there, there's. there's my back here again. 
Yep, you're there. Go. Okay. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, report on the water system. So what we're required to test for, any detects we find. Um, sorry, I keep going in and out here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but any detects we find, we need to report. Um, so that's what you see. Anything listed in there is is actual, um, you know, uh, detects that showed up. Nothing was above MCLs. We're well below MCLs. Tested for a variety of other contaminants um, with nothing on them. So uh, our lead and coppers, our last year on lead and coppers in 2020 came out good. Um, you know, it, it basically it it uh, you know our our health of our water system is is pretty good shape. Um, if you have any questions, if you've seen anything in there that you're looking for answers on, it could help you out. It's quite a testimony to Ron and Ron's people every day monitoring our system and what they do. To keep the water that safe in a community of this size with no detects for any of that. It's, it's pretty dang good. Proud of those guys. Great system. And then the name is Consumer Confidence Report, and this should breed should breed confidence with our customers for our water. All right. I uh, there's no action on that. It was just kind of a heads up. Yep. Um. And and I I know we're we're being a little quiet, but yeah, it, I, I I echo your. You know, congratulations. So that this is this is good. So should we move along? Yep, let's move it right along then. Thanks, Ron. Okay. So Mike Noreen is gonna so some of you may remember or maybe not remember that the green energy blocks, that's a voluntary thing where a customer of ours can pay three dollars a month to buy a green energy block. We are number one in the state of Wisconsin. What are we, number four, I think, in the country for municipal, number two, Mike says, number two in the country for municipal electric utilities as customers, as a percentage of our whole customer base, over 13% of our customers voluntarily pay three bucks a month to be in the green energy block program. It's simply amazing. It's off the charts. That $3 a month program is going to $2 a month. And Mr. Noreen is going to talk to us a little bit about how we're going to educate our customers on it going from three dollars a month to two dollars a month and what we might do with that mr noreen the floor is yours thanks kevin that was kind of like the the movie that i was going to watch last night we watched the trailer and then they just kind of told us the whole movie and we're like oh do we need to watch it but i'll we'll go through it anyway uh, i think you'll like it <laughs> so with that um thanks for having me on tonight everybody and um and to the, to the new members, uh, we'll give you a little bit of background. So here we are. All right, so uh, everyone can hear me well and can see the PowerPoint. So Renewable River Falls, uh, as, as Kevin mentioned, uh, is our effort to, to educate and promote our, our Revenue neutral program. It's a pass through. Uh, so a customer wants to choose voluntarily choose to purchase renewable energy. Uh, they they do it through our renew our green black program, and then it's a pass through directly to WPPI. So uh, next slide. Is that is that slide advancing? Not. Or it looks like it's the still still the same slide, and we worked through this too. <laughs> okay, there we there go. go. Um, so, just a couple of quick questions. You know, what is a green block of energy? So, currently, it costs three dollars for three hundred kilowatt hours of renewable energy. And what is three hundred kilowatt hours of renewable energy? That's a or energy. That's about how much a typical person uses in a given month. So if you have a house of, of three, you're probably somewhere around 900 kilowatt hours. So it doesn't make a difference 
um, it to produce 300 kilowatt hours of energy, it takes about 300 pounds of coal a month. Um, and depending on whether we're buying coal or we're producing energy with natural gas, that can vary. So why is the price dropping from $3 to 2 is simply because the price of renewable energy is dropping and it's been dropping for some time now. And uh, the, the WPPI and the executive committee made that decision to uh, price it fairly and to, to adjust those prices. And they, they do take a little time to run through the system and I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. Um, and what we're asking is uh, why should I double my green block purchase? Because it's going down from three dollars to two. What we're seeking is people to uh, is to buy two blocks instead of one, or to to double that. And, and why is because really through this green block program, it's, it is the cheapest and it's the easiest and most impactful way to reduce your carbon footprint uh, or to have renewable energy. We certainly have other programs whether it's a uh, community solar or to put it on your roof, but the green block, pro block program has been very successful in River Falls and we wanna encourage people to participate. So how it started, just to give you a little more background, uh, in November of 2019, uh, a lot has happened since then. Um, the UAB and City Council approved powering seven city buildings with 100% renewable energy, and uh, the remaining meters would be added once that price had dropped. So the Executive Committee approved that changes to the Green Block Program for all WPPI members. In August of 2020, RFMU, we filed uh, this rate tariff change with the PSC. So about a year ago, and uh, the PSC uh, took their time and their due diligence in looking it over and approved it in, um, I think it was probably April of uh, 2021. And then they allowed us to uh, roll it out on July 1st. And what that, what that has done, it, the impact of River Falls is that we would, we will become the first city to be powered with 100% renewable energy, and um, it it caught there's a two percent uh, utility bill increase for the city of River Falls. Now, I didn't want to make this presentation too big, but um, we through conservation and efficiency measures, we have been able to reduce our utility bill by greater than four percent um, through those measures. So. Uh, we did the conservation and we do the efficiency first to lower those bills. Um, of course, we we've, we've added some infrastructure as well in that time and we're able to lower that by 4% and now we're at good time to add the renewable energy. So our, our overall uh, cost for the, for all of our buildings is, let's see, you know, it's, it's about $600,000 a year, and this adds uh, about, about a little under 13,000. So we have some pretty big bills, and this does not add a whole lot to it. The difference is uh, in currently, is when you look in this first or the middle column, uh, if you buy 100 blocks of renewable energy, and there's, there's certainly some that we call those industrial customers, that if you buy 100 blocks, that cost goes down to $2 a block. And if you're like uh, most residents and businesses, you're buying less than 100 blocks, that cost is $3. Now, as we go into July 1st, that threshold is dropped from 100 blocks down to 20. And when you buy 20 blocks, that price per block goes to $1. So significant. Uh, price decrease. And then for uh, those of us who are buying a few for our home or a business, that price goes down to $2. How we're going to do this, and a lot of this presentation is how we're going to uh, share this information, how we're going to educate our customers, is 
the first one in the July bill, there will there will be a bill stuffer. And this one, because we have so many people already participating, we're asking them to go one step further. So if you have a block, we're asking you to buy two. Um, and if you're certainly if you're not buying any, we're asking you to 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 participate, to get involved. Some of the other marketing that we've done, and uh, some of it's already happened, and certainly a lot of it's going to happen in the future. Uh, we're going to be uh, hitting it hard on the RFMU and city websites uh, with our um, with our news feeds and with our newsletters. Uh, our customer service reps play a very big role in this, and they've been doing an excellent job in in making the ask when. We've, we've added it to our application for service. And when they that when they're talking through with that customer, we explain the program and ask them if they want to participate and they've done an outstanding job. Another option is the my account. Uh, we, we've you've heard a lot about my account and trying to get people to go online. We're creating a widget so. We, it'll be right on that website. So if you want to participate, you click on that and you're signed up easy enough. We have posters at City Hall and events. And for those of you that went to the uh, electronics recycling event, you always know that that's a very popular event. And um, we always have a line, uh, which is not a bad thing unless the line is really long, <laughs> which we've adjusted. And we have had. Um, this last year, we've had multiple posters along those lines. So people, as you're waiting, you drive past it and then you see different reasons why you might want to participate. It's in city and chamber, city and chamber newsletters. Uh, we're making a couple of TikToks for those of you that uh, have kids and they've heard them talk about that. Uh, making videos. Uh, we've we've received some uh, good press with uh, through the Star Observer and Wisconsin Public Radio. And you can see uh, Governor Evers uh, shared his thoughts on it. So it's always good to um, get some some statewide recognition for that and which you deserve as utility advisory board and city council members because you are the leadership that passed this. So um, very happy with that. Know if and then some other Mike, ways I want, we. I want, Mike, I want to know if Mr. Morissette has made any TikTok videos. <laughs> you know, it's on my to-do list. I just haven't gotten to that yet. Yeah. First, I got to figure out what it actually is, and then I'll, I'll then I'll get back to you. You see, yeah. you, you're gonna, you're gonna do that some fancy dance on there. Y yeah, that's me. That's that's yeah. my style. <laughs> well, we'll have opportunities for you if you want to be out there for it. Um, yeah, so some TikToks coming, uh, and then you know Facebook will be another one. And um, you know this isn't all about renewable or about the climate. This is uh, people take action for a number of different reasons. Whether it's um, they want to participate because everybody else is because this is a thing in River Falls, or because the price is dropping, or because in some other instances you get a. Uh, a greater incentive uh, for buying an uh, electric chainsaw. So we have we have structured some of our programs to get greater incentives for participating in renewable energy. And then the face to face discussions. We're coming out of COVID and uh, we're excited to get back to talk to uh, some of our larger power customers and managed accounts. So there'll certainly be a lot more face-to-face -face discussions. And um, like I said, we're, we're excited to get back out there and serve our customers. So those are some of the ways that we plan to, to market this. Um, we're not, this is not a done deal. This is not the end of what, how we're going to market it. So if there's other ideas out there, we're, we're all ears. So with that, um, I, my presentation is complete and I'm willing and eager to answer some questions for you. I'll just say I've been pushing Mike to figure out how to let me know as a customer 
how many blocks do I need to buy to be carbon free at my house or to be zero emissions? Is it, Mike, is it one block? Is it two blocks? Is it two and a half yeah. blocks? So when I know that, and some we can then market it and say, hey, if you want to be a uh, totally greenhouse, uh, carbon neutral, you need to buy two blocks for four dollars, you know, a total of four dollars or something. Yeah, it, that's a good question. And uh, the average in River Falls is, I think, about 850 kilowatt hours. But, you know, what is what it is an average home? Uh, you know, we all have uh, families either getting bigger or getting smaller and moving out and so on. Well, so a good 10 kilowatt hours a month. In my yeah, so a good rule of thumb is to uh, one block per person is is a, a good way to go. Um, but I get me, Mike. Uh, was that how much will that get me? Will I be halfway to carbon neutral or is that a whole way for one block? For one block for let's say and how many kilowatt hours did you say let's that just you're say, let's just say I'm the average? I'm 725. Okay. Um so if you what we're trying to do is if if you can get if you buy two blocks, that will get you six hundred kilowatt hours a month and you have your average of of 750 then close. we have all these we have a, a, pun, a bunch of other programs available to, to help you reduce your needs whether it's uh the air conditioning rebate or air conditioning tune-up um or led lighting incentives there's the free packs from the focus on energy so if we can get you to 600 kilowatt hours for a standard home through energy efficiency, we could probably bring you down to being completely carbon neutral. So two blocks in most cases will do it. Uh, if you go with a, a third block uh, for a typical home, that would more than more than cover it. So like for an average customer, if you're buying a green block now for three dollars, instead of just taking the reduction down to two, I just add a dollar to my three, make it four. And now I'm really close to being a carbon carbon neutral home. Yep, it's a, it's a good program. Uh, I mean, people have really jumped on board with it, and uh, and it's it it is it's revenue neutral. So it's a good thing that we're not we're not by by selling renewable energy, we're not uh, cutting ourselves off the knees anywhere else. So um, it's a it's a good pass through program, voluntary, and clearly people love it in this town. Hey, Mike. Yep. Um, I know that we're now second in the nation. It looks like we probably moved up a little bit um, in the rankings. How close are we to like the number one? Like just thinking of that, is that also like another marketing employee of like, you know, if we can get so many of these, we can boost it. Not like the, the athletics guy is super competitive or anything like that, but like, <laughs> just thinking of it in that way too. Like if people can actually like see how close it is or to close the gap. Yeah, that, and that that's a it's a really good way to look at it to you know to have that kind of thermometer or the the race, and really we're about three hundred customers, new customers away from being number one in the nation. Was number one? Was it Palo Alto? Um, I I think so. Those guys. No, it was. Well, shoot, I'm not sure if it's Palo Alto or Sacramento. There's there's a in. And I'm sure there's a uh, number four or five on the list. They're like, who's number two again? Like River Falls, where are those guys? So um, there's a few small uh, <laughs> munis out there that are, are coming after us, but, and I don't remember all the names, I'm sorry. Okay. We're close though, Kellen. I mean, we're within reach. Yeah. And when Kevin came on board, we were uh, at 6% and he gave us the challenge to get get to 10 percent uh and so we took that on and we got there and far surpassed it so now we are we are we are gunning for number one so, so other other municipals in the state of wisconsin they say kevin how do you get to 12 or almost 13 percent how do you do that you know what i you know what the answer is ask that's what we do so when a customer signs up for new utility service we do the ask Hey, would you be interested in contributing to a green block? And here's what it does, and here's where we stand in the nation, and here's where we stand in the state. Would you like to sign up for one today? We just do the we just do the good old fashioned ask. 
And you know what? A lot of them do it. They said, Same, I have no uh, idea. Kevin, you brought up a point that I'm kind of interested in just based on my work. My industry is customer service with Anderson Windows. And reading here on the um, presentation as far as like the customer service representatives are making that, you know, that outreach to the community to ask, sign up for this. I'm I'm kind of curious because I guess I'm maybe I'm not aware and maybe the information's out there publicly, but how how large is our customer service force? Like, is it just a few people behind the phones that are calling out, or is it an army of people? I mean, three <laughs> three, we have three, three people, people work in the front, really. Awesome. Two and a half or three. It's not a big group of people. Sure, so not all heroes awesome. wear capes. They're rock stars. They're you exactly. know they're doing everything from asking to sell green blocks to solving yeah. every customer billing problem to making calls every month now for, for past due bills and sure. doing pay, payment arrangements with customers that can't pay the bill in full. So those yep. three uh, customer service reps are just doing such a great job. They're working awesome. They're working their tails off. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Kudos to them. It's, it's uh, mm -hmm. often an overlooked uh, position that is really a key part to a lot of I was companies talking to and their communities. I was Right, I was talking to their manager today and I said, that's a tough job. I mean, yeah, a lot right. of it's negative, right? I mean, you're dealing with exactly. customers who are not happy and there's not a lot of happy moments in a day and I know it can wear you down. So it takes yeah. a special type of person to keep your, keep your psyche up to handle that. It's not always Absolutely. Easy. And, and yeah, in my years of customer service, like you just said, Kevin, it's not, not very often you get someone calling just to say, great job. So, so it's, you know, I, I just want to implore all of us, you know, Keep those kudos rolling to the folks who are out there doing that because that's that's awesome it's not an easy job so they would appreciate it cool actually. thanks kevin mark yes. um west help put a chat section what, I, what is it i can't hear you really. okay pull your mic up if you go to the chat section mark west pedal oh and put a comment that if you could read that Oh, that, oh, I saw that earlier and I had mentioned it. That is, he's just on the phone. He's talking about this conversation right now. Oh, I, I see that. That'd be oh. worthwhile to do the presentations at the, the schools. schools. Yeah, possibly. Yes, I know we do have a school program. So, Mr. Noreen, I, I think, does, your, does our school person talk about that when they do the program? We do have a person going into the schools. We did up until last year because of COVID. Mike, are they discussing this? Uh, no, we don't really discuss our programs. Uh, we try to keep it just science based and and educational. Uh, we could expand it, but um, I try not to uh, have it as a, a city or RFMU promotional uh, presentation, but more of a take the place of or fit fill the need of science based curriculum. But it's a good idea. And we'll always consider that stuff. So. Yep. Thanks, Lene. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Any other questions you might have? Okay, with that, uh, I appreciate your service to the community and utilities, and I will be in the background. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. You bet. All right, Kevin, who's who's delivering our finance report tonight? today? So in, in next month, we're going to get the full quarterly report from our finance department. But today I have an abbreviated version and I'm happy to present our financial statements, uh, financial report for June. So much better than last year. Hooray, hooray. <laughs> so everything's everything's in the plus uh, revenues uh, for electric 5.6 million expenses are 5.5. You can see what we spent on some hydro relicensing that is kind of winding down a little bit. So we shouldn't have any more big, ex huge expenses this year. Um, water fund. And this doesn't include the latest drought. So wait till I would everybody brace for your utility bill next month, I guess. Um, water fund year to date, 860 expenses, 811. That's good. Um, sales are 9.4 million gallons higher than the prior year to date. Again, that's going to really balloon after we get the next month's bill. Sewer fund doing great there, 1.4 million on the revenues, a million on the expenses. Uh, stormwater fund, 243 and 222. Again, that is also very good. If 
we go down a few pages, let me see here. What is this page? Uh, the balance sheet. So look at the balance sheets. Electric on page 4, 90, 98. Electric. I like, I like that here. Year to date, charges for service, 5.4 million. Last year, we were at 4.7 million. So you can see we've really pulled out of COVID. Um, people that are back to using electricity, the university is open, school districts open. People are people are using the product, so um, that's good. You'll see the same thing for water and sewer as you go down. So everything is in the plus this year. We're sitting good and um, electric. I, I was going to mention it later, but let's mention it now. We hit the all time peak load last Thursday for electric. We were at 29.7 megawatts. For context, when I started here eight years ago, the record peak high was around 25 megawatts, and we just about hit 30 megawatts last week. We were about a million, we we're about one megawatt higher than our previous all time peak high that we hit last Thursday. So, electric really uh, being used, air conditioning loads were going through the roof. Every day last week, we hit a new record peak. I think because the heat never really subsided. Air conditioners were really kicking in on Thursday afternoon and uh, 29.7 megawatts. And then, of course, water last Thursday as well, all time record on um, somewhere between 2.4 and 2.5 million gallons of water pump last Thursday. So last Thursday, record day, record heat, record drought. So things are looking good on the finances uh, for utilities. Like Mr. Moore said, said it's a double edged sword, right? You're we're on conservation, but yet. In order to run our utilities, we need to sell the product and services. So, there you have it, Patrick. Thank you. Um, I am curious. I'm glad to hear about the, the the plus side of things, but I'm curious for the customers' sakes. Um, how are we doing with unpaid or late things that have come out of last year, especially? Yeah, I think that was in here as well. And I do. I just I'll just anecdotally because again, I had a meeting today with the customer service. Um, uh, manager, and we have it whittled down pretty good again. I think we did another, I think uh, right around 20 new payment arrangements. So we either have people on payment arrangements, they're paid in full, and we had, you know, right around 15 that were on the disconnect list. And by the time we get to disconnect day, that will be down to our typical two or three. So, and what Excellent. we had done, Patrick, on that is so we tried to pick off everybody who was $500 behind or more. That was our top tier we went after. And now we're bumping that down to 250 right now. So now we're in the next tier of calls and proactive, um, but it's really coming around. So we whittled that way down from where we were at. That's good to hear. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also have a new slide in the, I think that's the next thing on the list. Some of these, uh, the uh, charts, dashboards, AMI metering. I have that one on page 102. That's new. We'll kind of watch this every month. It tells you that we're real close to half done with electric AMI meter installations on page 102. Water, we have more than 9% done, and those are mainly new construction. We haven't really been getting into homes yet, but we're just going to start re-entering homes and scheduling customers now that the COVID's clearing up, and we'll be uh, we'll be getting about a, a six-year approach to getting all the AMI water modules in, and we're when we're under budget on that as well. Uh, that next page is always kind of interesting, page one hundred and three. So Mike Noreen and our WPPI rep, they've got nearly seventeen thousand dollars back into the community through. Some through some of the incentive programs. So again, uh, we've the last few years we were like 130 to 150, maybe one year 170 thousand. So they they bring the money back into the community. We we ship out about 50 thousand, and we usually minimally get two for one for our money, and it's even been up to three to one. So we have a good start on that. There's the energy blocks. And uh, I mean, again, you can just see on all the other charts, everything's in record territory this year for electric water and sewer. I think I've covered that well enough. If there's any questions, I'd be willing to answer. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. This isn't on the dashboards or anything, but just kind of curious since it's finance related. 
Um, do you have any updates sort of on how much uh, Kinney Corridor Collaborative has uh, fundraised so far? Yeah, um, I had this question via an email or call a week or two ago, and I haven't received any small checks and I haven't received any big checks. So there's been no, even if I had a check picture, Kellen, of someone holding a big check, I'd probably call you and get you in front back behind a check and get it in the thing, but we don't have one yet. So um, that's, so no. Here's some poss possibly good news though. Representative Sh Sh Shannon Zimmerman really worked hard on getting some money for hydro for the dam removal into the state budget. It wasn't able to be a line item, but they got some money put over to the DNR, I think up to a million dollars for dam removal for River Falls. It may be just south of a million, but it was at 400,000 before, but the number that made it into the preliminary budget is a million dollars for our dam removal from the DNR. So that's positive. That sounds very collaborative. <clears throat> <laughs> so, yeah, so I know Scott Simpson and Brant Johnson, Scott's assistant, worked very hard with Zimmerman's office on getting that in there and uh, came through. So we'll see when the well, governor I will, finds it. Go ahead, go ahead, I'll put, Scott. I'll put a little bit of a plug in for, for the efforts of the mayor as well. He went yep. in front of the yes, Joint Finance Committee and he asked for three things. He asked for uh, funding of the technology center at the university, which happened. So the, the science and technology building, uh, the mayor asked for that and that happened. The mayor asked for money to be spent in mental health uh, in the region and that happened. And he asked for some funds to help with the dam removal and that happened. So um, speaking, any chance that we have as members appointed or myself members elected <clears throat> to get in front of other elected bodies or get in front of other elected representatives. Um, it is impactful when you talk to them and ask them for specific things and have good reason. And so uh, kudos to the mayor for the effort he put into that. Kudos to, to uh, Representative Zimmerman and all the efforts he put into to you know, River Falls is going to be impacted by all three of those things directly or indirectly. And it's fantastic to see that we are not forgotten about because that uh, happens quite a bit. Sometimes the people in Madison think that anything north of the Dells is all woods and back country sometimes. So it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not. So, Kellen, I know I do know the cases to be fair, they're still working on funding, so they still had pledged 60,000 um, for some of those early studies, which again, we haven't seen yet, but they pledged it and then are still working on other funding. So that's what I know. I'm just telling you all I know. Sure. <laughs> Scott, more set, am I being too harsh there or not harsh enough or? Uh, I would, I, I don't think you're being harsh enough. <laughs> it's time for us to see it. Not I, and I would broaden that statement or that in uh, that inquisitiveness, Kellen. I would broaden that out to all the stakeholders, not just KCC. Trout Unlimited should be doing a better job. Kinney River Land Trust should be doing a better job. There, you know, this is a benefit for the for all the stakeholders, and it's time that it's time that we start to see some some impacts that they get. For for this uh, for the for this activity for this project, yeah, and we we don't need to keep going on with this tonight because people have better things to do, and and we know that there's no money so far. So I mean, uh, but if you do want to add it as a extra dashboard, an unofficial dashboard to the report, you're more than welcome to do that. So I will take that upon consideration. Um, <laughs> Funny that uh, so I gave a presentation to Rotary last last week, and the fire chief, fire chief Nelson, was there, and I gave him a hard time because he passed the hat and raised one hundred and two thousand dollars for some piece of equipment at the fire station. I'm like, what in the world? Maybe we should just pass the hat, Kellen. Coming around. <laughs> I'd rather buy a green hat? energy block. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Kevin. I Patrick, if I could just back up. Um, 
Kevin, I had my electric AMI meter put in um, by Brian and Virgil, and yeah. want to say um, it was totally professional. Um, I, they happened to catch me because I've been working at home. Uh, it went outside, and I just followed them around a little bit over to the neighbors, just kind of from a distance. And those guys, they're so fast and so proficient that, and so professional. So that's just, I was impressed. Good. I'll pass, make sure that I get that passed along. You know, electric, you can go fairly fast because you don't have to get into a house. Water is a different animal because you have to schedule and you have to get in people's basements. Every water meter is in a basement. So it's going to be a little more time consuming. And it's about 20 minutes to 30 minutes for every water meter change out. And electric, you, you can do in about five to 10. So a little more labor intensive with water, but we'll get there. All right. I have on a utility report, Patrick. That okay? So you're hitting the last item for us as well. All right. Yeah, I think you know I was going to give some of these statistics on the drought and usage and stuff, but I think I sprinkled those in throughout the meeting tonight, so I won't rehash that. But we're we're on record use for all of our utilities. Fair enough. So very we good. Had, yeah, we had a power outage yesterday. We had some some 1979 vintage cable on Charlotte and State Street and knocked out about 50 customers. Um, our lineman was able to be in route to that outage before the call even came in from our one call service. Again, because of the AMI metering, we had two AMI meters on that outage and we were again notified. So we just boom, get right out there. We know something's happening before we even get the call in anymore. So that's, that's really uh, another positive of AMI metering. All right, and then Pat, our lineman, not to be confused with Patrick Richter, but Pat, our lineman, got out there and uh, he got all the residential customers on in about an hour and forty-five minutes. Then he had the apartment complex uh, that had the bad cable going to it. He was able to get them on in about three hours. Great, kudos to the staff once again. So, all right, ah. Uh, believe that is a wrap up folks so somebody want to move to adjourn make a motion to adjourn tonight's utility advisory board meeting thanks matt a second it's limited crew here as kellen has stepped off so I'll <laughs> thanks, Mark. Very good. Uh, thanks for your time, everybody, tonight. Look forward to seeing you in person soon. I hope the council meeting gives us a great precedent, and we will see you guys soon enough. I formally adjourn tonight's meeting. Good night. Hey, the, the sun's still hey, out. Longest day, of the, longest day of the year. Go enjoy that sunshine yet. Sure. <laughs> and I will point. I will point out before everybody signs off is that. I purposely didn't make one motion or second tonight, and everybody got through it. So. There's proof that you can do it too. I, I appreciate your pauses, Scott. He hesitated, Good job. Scott. We wanted to see if you could Thanks, do Scott. it. <laughs> Let's see if hold you on. could just hold, hold, it, hold it in. Yeah. All right. Oh. Good, Good night, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for all your hard work. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Bye, Bye now.